I'm just going to introduce Alyssa Zeta, who is the executive director of the Inuit Art Foundation. And the Inuit Art Foundation does so much to support artists uh, across the Arctic, and particularly young emerging artists as well. So uh, I think she's going to ask a few questions of me, after which you're welcome to. Okay. I'm going to say some things about you first. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's okay, but you can hit me. <laughs> Uh, so thank you so much, Pat, for inviting me to speak, and also Nancy for letting me. Um, as Pat said, I'm the executive director of the Inuit Art Foundation, and we are the only national organization that exists to support Inuit artists working in any region, in any community, in any discipline across the country. We're also very, very, very lucky to have Pat on our board. Um, supporting artists, yes. We have a very special community, uh, and I think all of you who are here tonight are part of it. And so much of what we do and what we care about, and what I am privileged to do personally, is to work with artists like Nancy. Uh, Nancy's work, as you can see here, is spectacular. Uh, I'm going to ask her some questions about it, and I hope that you will do too. Uh, but I just wanted to say that I have worked with Nancy um, for, I guess it's about a year and a half now, although we sort of met in August last year in a very intense situation on a cruise, yeah. um, which could either sort of make you really not like somebody or like really, really embrace someone. And ever since she's like my half sister now. But that aside, uh, I have always been an incredible admirer of Nancy's talent. Uh, some of the work that you see here really shows her range, but it's just really a small piece of how creative and inspirational she really is. You can see her spectacular sort of photorealistic drawing. Um, you can see her interest in movement, uh, some of her abstract minimalist work. She's also a throat singer, an actor, uh, clearly an incredible and inspiring and moving writer. Uh, she's a spectacular photo photographer. Um, and she's just a wonderful person. And something that she does that I think is not always so obvious is that she's always interested in community building and community engagement. Uh, she has painted about one half of Kujuak in yeah, Europe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Our, my community is uh, 2,500 people, and it's a very small town, and I have about like seven year olds and, and a few and more in the world. And like five more people. <laughs> yeah, so if you're in Kujuak, you will see Nancy's work for sure. Uh, she has a major commission at the um, Museum of Nature. Uh, where Pat was on the jury, and um, <laughs> and I heard the loudest cry of delight. I um, she also received our Virginia Watt scholarship last year uh, because she's incredibly deserving and uh, was a very, very. We were very proud of you. Uh, when you, the work that you produced with that uh, award money and all of your integrity and, and creativity was uh, acquired by the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts and it was the first conceptual installation acquired by them from an Inuit artist. And so, yes. Um, so I want to thank you for all of your creativity, your passion, and for sharing that with us. Um, I think this is a really special moment, and I'm so glad to be sharing it with, with each and every one of you. And I kind of want to ask you a little bit about your practice, okay. and then some of the, the specific works. Okay. So, um, you started your artistic career sort of professionally, um, not like so, so long ago. No, I, I actually, yeah, I started not, well, I started sharing my work, uh, maybe a little maybe six, seven years ago. Um, I was always very, um, I always wanted to express myself through art growing up. Uh, living in a small community, there was not very much to do. And I remember, I remember, um, you know, hearing the piano on the radio once it said, I want to be a pianist, this is what I want to do. So I, for my Christmas list, I wanted a grand piano. <laughs> <laughs> And if, if that is so cute. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was like six, you know, I was seven, I went to grand piano, black one. And um, you know, being Kujak, you don't have access to piano lessons or anything like that. And then I remember seeing on TV a, a modern dancer, she had a white dress on on stage with blue lighting. She moved so gracefully and I said, Yes, I'm gonna be a dancer and I asked for dance classes, but 
being in Kujuk, you don't have access to that. Mm -hmm. uh, what I had access to was pencil and paper, crayons and paper. So that's how I really started. Like, as I would go camping. I was a weird one to go camping. I'd bring my pad and paper. I'd sit there and try to, you know, uh, come up with like landscape drawings and stuff. But I stopped that for uh, in my young mm -hmm. adult life for so many reasons. And it's really like six years ago. Uh, with my boyfriend here, who, you know, I had time in the evenings to start doing art again. And I was in a good place in my life, and I started doing art again. And he told me that, wow, these are beautiful. I told him, yeah, nobody's gonna like this stuff, you know. And really, uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> and really, he, he helped me. He he was very much like my boss. It's like I need to take you while we're here, and uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, I very. Strangely, I shared something and then it kind of exploded, mm -hmm. and everybody was felt so strongly for my work, and I feel very fortunate uh, and blessed for that. <coughs> um, so yeah, it's been very not too long ago, six you know, years, kind of wild. <laughs> and it's, it's it started and it hasn't stopped yet. And I'm not going to complain. No artist is going to complain for it. Things like this, right? No. Um, and it's kind of amazing that in six years you have a solo show yeah. at one of the biggest art galleries in the city. Mm -hmm. That's a, you know how do you feel? I, I I'd like to thank Pat. I mean, this is this I'd like to thank you. Yes, so, I mean, it was a um, very much for your trust because we met uh, started talking about this in October, yeah. and I, you wanted photo uh, phot uh, photography that you had seen of mine, and I said no. I have a better idea. <laughs> I have all of these things that I want to create, you know. And I, I was I showed her sketches from my sketchbook, and she's like, "Okay, great, let's do it." And for your chest, so to have the space and to be able to photograph. What's that? Look at yes, yes. <laughs> Not leaving it behind. Yes. So I'm, I'm very, yeah, I'm very happy to be able to be here and to have all of these people like react so strongly to our work, like the cruise ship and the museum and all of these like, you know. Like amazing opportunities that I've had, I'm very grateful. Mm -hmm. But I believe that honestly, and this might sound really like cliche or something from like a fairy tale story, but I I do believe I'm a messenger before being an artist, mm -hmm. and I don't believe that I do this work. I I am just the one who I'm I'm the vessel. I guess I'm like the I'm the messenger. Mm -hmm. These ideas come to me, they flow to me like so abundantly that at night I wake up and I have to like write them in my book, sketch them in my book. Mm -hmm. And they come to me so regularly that I feel like it's not me. And you know, I guess I'm just it sounds all so like fairy tale like mm -hmm. I, I I do believe that. And sometimes I like the uh, portrait of my great grandmother when I when I was done I looked at it and like, whoa, like Mm -hmm. How did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect, and, I, and then I had to start. My grandmother, I was like, okay, how am I gonna, how am I gonna top that? Like, how am I gonna manage? I don't even remember how I started. I don't remember how I started. I don't remember how, like, how did I get this done? So I just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, I have my process before I start working. Mm -hmm. I did it again, and I'm gifted again with another work that I was very happy with. And, it's like that with all of my work. So I do believe that I'm a messenger first, mm -hmm. a messenger of something, of our culture, before being an artist. And being an artist is just how I share the message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a really strong thread through your work. So mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I feel often when I look at your work, even though it's it's so you're so accomplished in so many different mm -hmm. media and styles, is uh, that there's a real interest in a sort of narrative storytelling mm. and also uh, um, like a reflection of culture, both mm. past and present, and how those things come together mm. uh, and are expressed sort of as you're saying around um, mm. your lived experience, uh, your reflection on elders, and the way that you think about things. Um, for those of you who don't know, Nancy has done everything from watercolor portraits with uh, water that she's taken from particular rivers, she's doing that landscape. Mm. Uh, and then a series of paintings uh, about migration with actual objects from like caribou bones and feathers and things. She works really conceptually. And so um, you've been thinking about this body of work for quite some time, right? Mm. I, um, 
I don't remember now how long it's been, but I I keep them in my back pocket. I get <laughs> ideas and I write down my book. Um, I've struggled uh, very much with um, like mental health. I go very high and I go very, very low. And meeting uh, Williams, I, I've learned um, that to my highs, I come up with these great ideas, and it's to my lows that I have to, you know, realize them. So I got this idea that like, years back, I was like, you know, all hyped up in a good mood and everything, and like, oh, it's gonna be so great, and I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's in my difficult times, and I have to force myself to, you know, it kind of, kind of keeps me like balanced, you know. For sure. So, yeah, it just, it, it, all this kind of came to perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah. And you sort of realized it over uh, the last several months? Yeah, so we found out about this, um, well, we talked about this opportunity in October. And with all of this life stuff, I mean, art is the easy part. <laughs> I mean, fair it's, the, it's the life stuff that you can have to dodge. Yeah. Yeah, at the same time. So I've been working on this for the past four or five months. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, it's not, I, like I spoke earlier about like being a vessel and like all of this uh, coming through to me, but it's not like one time thing. You don't just sit down and like, well, I was going to just say, up. actually, I was like, you're yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, sometimes, sometimes we're lucky and it does happen like right away. Um, I've done like logos for companies, you know, that I was like, okay, I have a great idea. Then I boom, and then four hours later, it's done. I'm like, here. <laughs> so, but I, you know, these, this was very much like start over. I don't, it's not quite what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Let's do this again. Let's start over. It's always you have to be in the like, right mindset. Mm -hmm. So it's to be able to find that right mindset to become strong. I'm I'm going to I'm going to end up with doodles up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I know that we talked about as it was coming together uh, that it was really important to have like the right paper and yeah. to have the right size. Yeah. And uh, I think that speaks to the kind of rigor you bring to your practice. Yeah, it's all it's all all chosen. It's all meant. It's very intentional. Yeah, very intentional. Sometimes it's like free chance, though. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give, for example, these here, mm -hmm. um, these life drawings, like free chance. We were I was in Paris for a residency two years ago, two years ago now, and um, I went to. Uh, Saint-Denis as uh, the oldest uh, art supply store in Paris and I found this beautiful paper and I was like, oh, you know, I, I bought it, <laughs> brought it home. I didn't know what I was going to use it for. I was like, sure, forgot about them. Uh, they were on the desk between all of my sketchbooks and one night I was looking, like I was thinking, okay, I had an idea a few years back. Let me go look at it. I was looking through my sketchbooks and and I was I was looking for something a, a support for the model drawings. I couldn't quite find it. And one night, looking for a sketch that I did like a while back, I see these papers and I I jumped. I I, I was I was screaming, "Woo! I found my paper!" <laughs> so it was it was kind of you know two years ago. Brought this paper. It was meant for this. So this is paper handmade from Nepal. Yeah. Bought in Paris. So random with any tattoo artwork on it. Two years later, mm -hmm. so there's things that are so I work very like instinctively sometimes. Like if I'm painting, um, and this is where my I feel like I'm the messenger. I'll choose, let's say, a black. I want, like, a, I'll use. I will want to use black, and I'll drop the black, like by accident. That this has happened to me, and then I see on the floor a darker indigo blue. So oh, that's a better choice. So it's all very like oh no. Choose this instead. Oh, no, 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 no. Because it was all to me. I'd probably be a really bad artist. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's all these like fluke, you know, chances, mm -hmm. but also very bad. Yeah. yeah. And you touched on this sort of already, but the, the kind of oh, the clear theme here is around reclamation of tattooing practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little about that more? So, so tattooing was a practice that existed throughout all of Circumpolar North, uh, as Nayo was explaining, uh, Greenland. Um, Nunavut, Nunavik, Labrador, those are territories, Alaska. And it's a practice that was very quickly put aside with a lot of missionaries and um, just because you know in the Bible it says like not to mark your body if you want to make it to heaven and all this stuff. So very quickly Inuit put it aside and didn't talk about it because it was considered, you know, against the Bible. 
other than compared to like with Josie, where we kind of secretly shared it, you know? Um, so tattooing was very, very quickly put aside. Mm -hmm. And there's people in my region that still believe that tattooing didn't exist in Nunavik. And I have like, I've seen photos, I've seen actual photos, I've seen actual um, texts and I mean, mm -hmm. from Nunavik, right? Yeah. Photos from women from Nunavik. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my family's not very happy that I tattooed my grandmother and my great grandma because their, their mother and their, their grandmother, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're very religious, but I didn't do these. Mm -hmm. I had to, I felt like I really had to. Yeah. And, you know, drawing my grandmother, Hotek is my namesake. Um, I was full. I would get waves of pure love. Mm. I was feeling it like inside as if I was falling, like as if I would I was smiling as I was drawing her, I would, I would laugh as I was drawing her. Like just waves of pure love full in my chest, in my stomach, and I'm thinking, if I was if I wasn't supposed to do this, then I'd feel guilt or I'd feel or the paper would not work or it just wouldn't work out if it wasn't meant to be and I just kinda of went from beginning to end and all kinda of worked out and I mean, I've never felt this before, these waves and waves of like pure love and love, thinking of her, remembering her. Hey. Hey, you uh, made it. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with how that turned out. My uncle, my family, they're not happy, but you know, it's my grandma. It's my, my life. <laughs> well, Same for my mother here, she's, uh, she's very much like, I get it from her, very much outside the box thinker. <laughs> And so I told her, like, Mom, I'm going to do your portrait and I'm going to give you tattoos. She's like, oh my god, I'm a forehead tattoo, I'm on a chin tattoo, on a chin tattoo, on a chest tattoo. Can you put a hand in there somewhere, on a hand tattoo? <laughs> so she was very, like, very open with the fact of getting tattoos. Mm -hmm. Do you think she wants Jessica to do it? What's that? Do you think she'll want Jessica I, to do it? I actually, I'm really hoping, so after this, this is my hope, is to be able to learn the practice of tattooing. Because mm -hmm. there is a tattoo artist in the chair with there's no tattoo artist in Nunavut, Northwest Territories, Alaska, and Greenland, nobody in my region. And I would love to be able to be the one uh, to bring it back to my region. So hopefully one day I'll let it go. Yeah. 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 Well, that, was, that was so cool. Yeah. I mean, you can tell looking at the piece, right? Like, the, she, just the joy and the mm. from that. She was such a warm, loving woman. And it's funny because when, as I'm sewing, and uh, we were very close. Because she's my namesake, or the bone. She's my bone and her bone. Mm -hmm. Samik, that's what it means. So I, in the Inuit culture, we believe that I will pick up her traits of personality, and I will uh, complete things that she couldn't complete in her life. Mm -hmm. And because she's my Samik, my bone, she would ask me things like, what are we doing today? Where are we going today? Have we eaten? Are we okay? Are we full? I'm glad that we're like we're not hungry. So this is this this was my connection with her, and I never really had memories. Like I think of her and I'd have memories, but not as I'm sewing. I'd have these like these memories that I kind of forgot about, like being in the tent with her behind my house. She had a tent. Um, her laughing at me for a certain reason. She mm -hmm. comes to me on all my dreams, and she's always laughing at me. <laughs> in my dreams, I'm always doing something, and she's over there like just kind of. Like I'd say they're just laughing. So yeah, I, I, I believe that I have to do, do this. Hmm. And if I if I was if I wasn't supposed to, she would have come to me in the gym and told me. And it seems very like cliche and like, ooh, like beep, 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 beep. but that's really how I feel. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Does anyone else have questions while we're chatting? Or should I do you think actually what we I think people can um, Asking the individual, wants to ask a question. Now. Yeah, you guys are more than welcome. I, I, my grandfather used to call me, uh, like, I used to, like, after daycare, I'd go to his house, my grandmother's house, and my grandfather's house. And it was, he would say, Oh, we have many people visiting. It was just me, I was four. <laughs> it's because he would ask me one question, I did. <laughs> I just like never stop talking. I learned to speak when I was very young and I had to stop. So it's like my favorite to like talk and tell you guys if you have any questions. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm very I'm very happy that this turned out. It's wild that we managed this like it's wild. Well, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. I would just say to close and turn it back over to Pat that I know it's wild and crazy, but it does feel really meant to be, and mm -hmm. also that um, you made it happen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the work is incredible, and I hope everybody takes the time to really look and consider it. Uh, there's different kinds of thread in the, in the works, and I would encourage you to really like, ask Nancy about it, because she's chatty, but also <laughs> has lots to say. Um, and I really am so privileged to be here with you and uh, hosted by Philly Fine Arts and with everyone in this room. Uh, this feels like a, such an important moment, and um, thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing all of this with us.